When ChatGPT first came out, I decided to essentially only use it sort of like a coworker that I would occasionally get help from. And I decided not to more deeply integrate AI assistants like GitHub Copilot into my workflow. A year or so later, I've still been sticking to this. I still haven't used GitHub Copilot, and whilst I'm still not heavily using ChatGPT, it has become a common part of my workflow and has unlocked skills and opportunities for me that might not have been possible without it. Just recently, something happened that I think highlights what are both the most powerful and most dangerous aspects of ChatGPT for more advanced code. So this little story starts with this issue that was opened on an open source utility I've been maintaining. The existence of this utility is what highlights the powerful aspects of ChatGPT. I had a lot of the knowledge necessary to build this thing, but the typing required for it is quite complex and I couldn't rely on my real person coworker in this scenario to just do all of the hard bits for me. Although ChatGPT couldn't just instantly solve all of the typing problems I threw at it, its suggestions combined with the knowledge I did have about TypeScript allowed me to get things working. It also pushed me to learn more about the areas where I lacked the appropriate knowledge and apply them directly and immediately to a real scenario. Without this sort of accelerated learning ChatGPT can provide, I might not have had the time to complete this task. This is the part that I think is extremely powerful about ChatGPT. It can be great at getting you unstuck. You might know most of what you need to build something or achieve some task, but maybe there is some part you are lacking that just completely blocks you from getting it done. ChatGPT can help break through those barriers quickly and point you in the direction you need to go, especially in these more advanced scenarios where there might not be obvious or pre-existing solutions. Figuring out what you need to even be learning in the first place can be difficult and time consuming. What I found with building this utility was that for the early parts of the project, I much more heavily relied on ChatGPT for ideas or implementations. But as the project progressed, I was rapidly learning the key bits of knowledge I was missing and felt capable solving most typing issues with no assistance. I ended up with a solid product and a bunch of new knowledge I could use for future projects and for maintaining this project. This, I think, is a healthy and powerful way to use AI coding assistance. Where I think it is not as healthy is where you are relying on it to substitute for large gaps in knowledge. There is a scenario I run into constantly with ChatGPT that feels like a giant trap for people who might be over relying on ChatGPT and don't have an appropriate level of knowledge and context for the task. So this is where this issue comes into the story. When first reading about this bug, I did already have a sense of what was happening. It's a type inference issue I had run into before. But it had been a while since I had worked on Signal Slice, so I was lacking some context. And like everyone else, I'm always lacking time, so I handballed it to ChatGPT to see what it would say. It gave me a seemingly reasonable answer. It wanted me to create these utility types instead of using the T-action sources and T-action effects types directly. The crux of the problem was that the generic types for T-action sources and T-action effects were being inferred too early. My knowledge of advanced TypeScript still isn't strong enough to know at a glance if this was going to work, but it looked promising. It didn't work though. This sort of thing happens all the time with ChatGPT. It gives a promising looking answer, but it just doesn't work. So I pressed ChatGPT some more explaining that it doesn't work, and as is commonly the case, it suggested sweeping changes. It wanted me to switch to a class-based approach and use a builder pattern that would completely change how the public API for the utility works. I feel at this point it would be easy to assume that ChatGPT is right and that what you're trying to do just isn't possible with the current setup. So you either give up or make the drastic changes ChatGPT suggests. But I wasn't just swinging wildly with ChatGPT here. I did have an understanding of the problem, general knowledge of how the utility works overall, and what I'm trying to achieve with it. I have a whole heap of context that ChatGPT doesn't. And so with a little more effort, I was able to come up with my own solution. It involved creating more targeted types so that properties were typed only with the specific features they actually need to function rather than supplying them everything in the signal size. This is what would cause some types to be inferred too early. This required only a small change to fix the issue. Out of curiosity, I decided to grill ChatGPT a bit. I asked what it thought of the solution I had come up with. With the typical ChatGPT flattery, it said the solution was elegant and gave reasons why. I asked why it didn't suggest something like this initially, and it defends itself quite well actually. It said essentially that my approach is tailored to this specific situation, whereas ChatGPT was generally going to go for a more general solution, again with some flattery thrown in for good measure. This is essentially why I think, at least for now, it is still so important to not too heavily rely on coding assistance. 
Having context of the problem and the system in general allows you to search for solutions where a coding assistant might miss them and to know when a coding assistant might just be leading you astray. This is partly my worry about more integrated AI assistants like GitHub Copilot. Having it handle boilerplate syntax and APIs for you probably provides a massive speed boost to development with no important loss. But I think it also makes it easy to start letting Copilot steer the ship too much, and then you are losing that important knowledge and context of the system you're building. Until we get to the point where AI can do all of the coding for us completely, we do still need knowledge and context of the code stored in human brains to get the job done properly. Until then, AI assistants wielded with a good strategy can still be a powerful ally. Anyway, I'd love to hear about how you approach integrating AI into your own workflow, if at all. And if you like this video, please feel free to leave a like or subscribe before you go.